Robin Blackburn McBride here, transformational life coach and author, and it is my privilege to speak to you today on a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. It's uh, also a topic that's very near and dear to uh, the hearts of my clients, people who come in to do beautiful work on themselves and on their lives in expansive and deeply fulfilling ways. And this is the topic of clarity. And you will see me looking down from time to time. I want you to know that I am totally uh, prepared to deliver some value to you today. So you will notice me looking at my notes. I don't want to use a teleprompter. I have done that before and I don't like it. I want to speak to you directly. So bear with me if you see me glancing away at times. It's so that I have everything here in place for you. When we talk about clarity, first and foremost, let me say that clarity is one of three very powerful areas that I decided to focus on and include in the tagline for my coaching business, clarity, confidence, and results. And well, we could start with the question, why is clarity so important? My answer to that question is that clarity is important because it is the catalyst for everything that you will create as you learn to shift into a very purposeful, consciously creative life. In other words, a vision-driven life instead of living from circumstance. You and I are going to be creating anyway. That's the thing. We don't have a choice about that. So the question is, would you love to be creating a life that you love? truly love? Or are you okay with simply creating by default and allowing conditions to run the show? You and I get to decide the answer to that question. I am going to suggest that the more clear you get about what it is that you would love in your life, the more you will start to take purposeful action and actually see things show up in your life that were once upon a time uh, things that you merely wished for. And I'll say more about that a little bit later in this talk today. So I'm going to share a story with you, a personal story, and then I'm going to give you three shifts. I'm calling them clarity shifts so that uh, you will have some tools ready to use when you have uh, finished listening to this video. And I also want to add that uh, I have created a blog to go along with this video and it's on my website. So feel free to hop over there if you would like to see this or parts of this in writing. You know, my husband and I recently returned from a marvelous and truly enchanting trip to San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And this is a magical, magical city in the mountains of Mexico. And it's a place that I once heard about. Uh, I'm going back decades, uh, decades ago from my aunt and uncle, because my aunt and uncle would go down there in the winters. Uh, they would leave the land of snow and ice and they would take themselves away to San Miguel de Allende. And my aunt would say to me, and this is going back many years, she would say, ah, oh, you know, when I was raising my daughter for quite a number of years, I was raising my daughter as a single parent. And my aunt would say, you should bring her down here. You would love it. Come at March break. It would be so wonderful. And I would say, oh, yes, that does sound wonderful. That sounds amazing. Well, the years passed. And that trip never happened with my daughter. My daughter grew up. Uh, we did other fun things together, but that beautiful trip that my aunt and I would talk about together, it never came to pass. Years later, when I met the love of my life and married him, uh, my aunt said to me, you know, I would love it if you guys would come down. Come on down. Spend some time with us in the winter and, and, and be here with us. And wouldn't it be wonderful? Well, 
two years ago, my aunt passed away and it was unexpected and it was fairly sudden. And 18 months later, my uncle followed her. And I say that because it's a reminder that you and I are on a human journey and none of us knows how much time we have. And so when that happened, um, particularly after uh, my uncle passed away last fall, I remember having a very, very strong kind of wave of emotion came over me and I turned to my husband and I said, we are going to make that trip to San Miguel happen. And he was on exactly the same page as I was on. And the two of us just resolved, just like that, that we were going to do it. And we did. And it was easy, actually. So why am I telling you this story? Well, I'm telling you this story because I want to point out for you that there were former versions of me, there were previous versions of me, and I'm contrasting them with the current version of me. And I say this because there are previous versions of you. And there's also a next version of you that is speaking to you, that longs to be expressed through you. And it's that way with all of us. This is part of what being a growing human being means and it has nothing to do with the number of candles on our birthday cake. So it's part of our evolution. Now years ago a former version of me when I started thinking about this magical place San Miguel de Allende, um, I would turn my thought process over to my reasoning faculty. Now of course the reasoning faculty is a very important faculty, okay? Ration is an important faculty, but it's not the only mental faculty that we have at our disposal. We actually have six very important mental faculties. Reasoning is one of them, and I would let reasoning run the show. And what would my reason do? Well, my reason would present me with questions. It would say things like, and this is going back to when I was raising my daughter, you know, do you really have the money to do this trip? Well, actually, when I think back on it, if I had really put my mind to it, yes, I could have come up with the resources to do that trip. But I would pause and I would think about it. And another one that would come up would be, you know, do you really have the time? Is this the ideal amount of time, a March break to go down and, and have this trip? And there was an inner perfectionist in me, again, very much connected with the rational part of my brain that said seven or eight days, you know, that's not very much to go all the way down there. Well, what did I do? I actually didn't ever go. We didn't have even a single one day down there because I let my reason be exclusively in charge. You know, when it came to considering the trip with my husband, my reasoning faculty came back again and it would, it would bring me questions like, um, it would actually take me to what ifs, you know, uh, what if really your aunt and uncle don't have the right apartment? this year? You know, what if the accommodation isn't right? What if it's cramped? What if it's a lot of work for them, too much work for them? What if they don't enjoy you being there? What if you don't enjoy being there? And all of these questions would be just enough to cause me to pause. And what would happen when I paused was I would just let go of it and it would dissolve. It would dissolve right into the air. And so the pro-con list. We have a tendency want to want to go to our pro-con list. When we go to the pro-con list, we are letting our reasoning brain have exclusive control. And I want to suggest to you that clarity shift number one that will help you to move forward in beautifully empowered ways in your life is to shift from giving the entire works over to your reason to actually learning to listen to the voice of your intuition. In other words, shift from living exclusively from here 
to living from here. Your intuition is connected with your heart center, and that is a very wise center to listen to. So we want to learn to listen to the voice of intuition. You know, Albert Einstein once said that the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to connect with your intuition. The next time you have a beautiful opportunity that's presented to you that may in fact be a dream of an opportunity. We missed out a number of times in my life. We missed out in being all together on a beautiful sacred trip because simply I was living from my head too much of the time. So intuition connects us with our heart as I said a moment ago. This is significant you know when we think of courage the word courage has the French word for heart, cœur, built right into it. It takes courage sometimes to think from our heart, and it is truly worth it. So how do you and I know what we would love? Well, this causes me to come to uh, the second shift, the second clarity shift that I'm going to share with you today. And it's the shift from wishing to dream building. Okay, so I will bet that there are all kinds of things that in your life you have wished for in the past, you're likely wishing for them right now, with zero expectation that they will ever come to pass. We're actually really good at wishing for things and really not believing at all. <laughs> that that we're ever going to have those things or experience those things. We build muscle in that. It begins when we sing songs like, you know, when you wish upon a star. It makes it seem like it's out there somewhere, never to be brought right here into our experience. So we want, and it, you know, even when you think about the word wish, the sound of the word wish, it kind of sounds like the wind through the trees. There's something insubstantial about it. We want to go from idle wishing to purposeful and concrete dream building. So a great way to do that, and my invitation to you, is to go to that old wish list and start to look at the items that really have energy for you and, and begin to allow yourself to believe that it would be possible for you to bring those things into the land of time and space and move them from your idle wish list to your purposeful dream sheet for dream building. Very, very important because the more we focus on the things that we would love to have in our lives, the more our attention is going there. And we've all heard the expression, energy flows where attention goes. And that brings me to shift number three, which is to shift from thinking in jot notes to thinking in fully developed ideas. We live in a culture that is moving very quickly. We're conditioned for speed. We're conditioned to be figuring out, you know, how many things can I pile into a day? How many things can I accomplish? How many things can I get done? And just even think about those words, get done. They have push energy in them. We're moving very quickly. Well, that often comes at the price of thinking things through in detail. And there is power to, for you in your dream building process in thinking things through in fully fleshed out detail. One of my clients put it beautifully recently. He said, we want to go from um, the bare bones to putting meat on the bones. And that's a that's a great, really simple, clear analogy for this, that we want to have our details fully delineated. Years ago, when I would think about this trip, I would just think in these little jot notes and these sound bites about what it would be, but I never actually made the time to sit down and think about what that trip would look like, what it would feel like. So as we start to think in detail, it prompts us to do amazing things, to start taking action. 
for one thing, research. You know, think about when you allow the question, wow, what would done look like if I really lived this experience, if I brought it into the land of time and space, what would it be like? Think about the questions that it will cause you to ask. Think about the phone calls that you would make, the pictures that you would find, the articles that you would read, the emails that you would send, all the learning that you would do in order to set the stage for this beautiful vision to become reality in the land of time and space. It's powerful. So I want to recap three key shifts that you can make to move very purposefully, very beautifully in the direction of your dream. Number one is to shift from exclusively living in your head to really be listening to your heart, going from reason to intuition, very, very key. Number two, shift from idle wishing to purposeful dream building. And shift number three in terms of your getting clear is to shift from thinking in jot notes to thinking in fully developed ideas. So at this point, I just want to conclude by saying happy dream building to you. I look forward to the next time we connect. And in the meantime, I strongly encourage you, I heartily invite you to write your comments in the space below. Send me your questions. I would be very happy to receive your comments and address your questions. And I wish you a very clarifying, beautiful experience of bringing your vision your dream into the land of time and space, to the beauty and power and potential of being here now. Bye for now.